chocolate thing. So, two of these are true, one of them is not. I have been punched in the face before, pain is not my real last name, and I married my high school sweetheart. Now, before we dive in, you can ask me anything, within reason, let's not get weird, right? But, um, I'm going to answer you as, as honestly as I can, I feel like. Um, Try to think about other questions you could ask based upon my responses, right? This is all about practice for you, the interview process. And if anybody came in with questions, I mean, I don't know, you may have. I asked you to, but I know how that goes. Um, you can ask those too. We don't have to just confine ourselves to this necessarily, but I thought this would give you guys something to start with. So, two truths and a lie. Let's see if we can figure it out. Would you like to start? Here and then here. You gotta ask questions, dog. Oh, okay, okay. You um, have no idea. Um, is your is your wife this uh, Anna Payne? Yeah. Your teacher kid? She is, and she does. That's a good class, man. Cool. She's pretty all right. She's much more. Um, I hate to say it this way. She's much more professional than I am. She dresses nice. She's she's more with it. We have very different styles. Oof, they asked me that in the last class, and I did the math then, and I'm, I'm, I'm worried because we're filming this, and I'm bad with dates, so I don't want to screw this up. You're right, you can do what you just. Well, I'm trying, yeah, I think I ballparked it then. I want to say, I feel like it's 12. 12 is a really good number. And we've been married 12 years. No, no, not married. Oh, I thought that's harder. Uh, that's more time. Uh, okay, well, if I'm basing it on 12, hang on. Okay, look, I suck at math. I'm not teaching math. Are we clear on that? I'm 34, so... Uh, I just didn't answer. What? Probably the wrong nation. Okay. Well, we, we were together before that, though. It was, anyway. Something like that. High school is a long time ago. But I said it's like you're still in high school. Yeah. And then we were together for a hot minute and then we got married. In grad school. You know one of the truths. And again, if you don't want to ask about one of these, you can ask me something else. I've seen the world, small parts of it. That's awfully quiet. It's not good for this kind of class. Does anyone have any suspicions? Start there. Does anyone assume one of these is wrong? You started to, right? Yeah. Which one did you assume? The second one. The second one? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It could be, I mean, Timothy Payne, right? That's the one. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, yeah, I think it is. I think that is a lie here. Okay. No questions about that? For instance, uh, one question I would have is given what you said. Then why would I put that up there? That's strange, right? No one is at all curious. This this is kind of this this set the last class a little bit on fire. They all wanted to know about this. Did I just look like the kind of guy that has a punchable face? Don't answer that. 
Yeah. Do you have a scar? Can I give you a punch? No. A scar? <laughs> I mean, it was a bad uh, night, but no. No, you gave me a punch. Yeah. What were you doing that night? I was at work. No, can I go back to it? No. This was a this was long time ago. Uh, I was working in a kitchen, and an ex-girlfriend came up to the kitchen, and she was upset, and probably drunk. She seemed drunk. Uh, and it was causing an issue, and I was like, well, I work here, so this can't happen here. So I offered to talk to her out back, talk to her for a minute, and she sucker punched me in the face. And she, by the way, she, she, like, taught, if anybody's ever been to a gym, like a class, she was one of those people at the front of the class that taught the, the thing, that never gets tired. Like, she taught kickboxing classes and stuff like that, so, like, she got a good shot on me. I was not expecting it. I, I, I remember I was like this and I turned and they were took fist. And she like rotated on it like she knew how to. You yeah. said she was your ex-girlfriend? Yeah, so if not before, definitely after, but no, yeah, yeah. So like, uh, like how old was she then? Was like... I don't know. I barely remember how old I probably was. Uh, I had to have been 17, something like that. 18. Huh? How many times? Uh, yeah, that's the only time I've been punched in the face. <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately, doesn't happen to me a lot. So I've lived the kind of life I don't get in the face a lot. You know. <laughs> Why didn't she knock me out? Okay. I'm not, is that a question? No. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, on the one hand, I, I didn't enjoy it. I remember I came back in uh, not long after that. It seemed like the conversation was over, you know? And uh, I remember my shirt was torn because she, she had grabbed that too, and my nose was bloody. And my buddy worked there. He's like, how's it going, man? I was like, it's not going well. Um, but on the other hand, I was like, well, I took a punch, you know? Felt good about that, I guess. Felt good that I, I didn't retaliate, you know. Some small part of me probably wanted to. I'm not gonna dispute that. I think it's natural when somebody punches you in the face. But yeah, weird night, pretty weird night. What's up? What would be your real last name? My real, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure, quite sure what you're asking. Like, uh, like, what exactly is like a, if pain is in your last name, then what, like, is it like just in, like, do you get like a name change or is it like your stepdad? Step well, pain, pain has been my name my whole life. Okay. But it's not my real last name. My real last name, uh, I think is Norton, which is disgusting. That's such an ugly name. Norton. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. My, it's my dad's name, as we do in our culture. Um, he was legally disowned by his dad when he was a teenager because apparently my grandfather's a monster. And he was legally adopted by a guy with that name. That guy, by the way, looked like Santa Claus. When I played Little League football, all my buddies would be like, October, like, the fucking Santa Claus is here. <laughs> he, started, he had the hair and the big beard and the, he was, you know, bigger. Straight up looked like Santa. moments when I when I uh, I remember one of my teachers asked what we wanted to do at the end of our freshman year and I told her I thought I wanted to do what she did I felt like such an ass saying that at the time 
Um, she looked at me pretty strange. She's like, what? Uh, but then, I mean, too, because, like, I was always an English major. Uh, when I first got to the school, actually, for orientation, we had an English professor as our person for our little group. And she asked, are there any English majors in here? Probably expecting, like, crickets. I think me and, like, maybe one or two other people raised their hands. She's like, that's so awesome that you guys are English majors. I'm so happy for you that you've, you've decided. I'm so glad you've accepted the fact that you're, you're not going to make money. I'm like, oh. Now she was right for me. I, I can't pretend it's right for everybody, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> since about then, I guess. How long have you taught here? Here? That's hard too. Years are hard. Um, my oldest is a good bellwether because we got hired here. Yeah, when he was like a year old or thereabouts, and he's going to turn five very soon, so four years. But I've taught for hmm, eight years, something like that, because I taught at Alabama before this. Go ahead. My favorite do what now? Music genre. Uh... I don't even know what it's called. I don't have a lot of time to listen to music. Uh, back when I really cared, I listened to like Radiohead, the Mars Volta, stuff like that. I also really like Twin Shadow, uh, a little more current. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. I like, uh, it's either gotta be pretty chill. I like a band called Washed Out. That's also, that's like super chill, kind of electronic. Um, yeah. But then if I'm like, if I'm doing something like cutting the grass or working out, I'll, I'll put on like At the Drive-In or, or uh, uh, The Flaming Lips. You guys have heard of any of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you always sound like an ass when you say this, or maybe less so in 2020. I don't really listen to the radio. I haven't done it in years. I, I did it before it was cool, which all that means is like I did it before Spotify was a thing. But uh, but now we have Spotify and, and all these others, so I just listen to what I like. On, on the way here, I actually, if anybody, all right, does anybody ever play GTA 5? Yeah. They have radio stations. My favorite radio station, this will tell you kind of my genre, uh, Radio Mirror Park. I love that radio station. Okay. There's a playlist on Spotify. Okay. It's great, yeah, I listen to that all the time. If you see me driving around town, I'm probably listening to Radio Mirror Park. Pretty good playlist. Yeah, you're, you're good. All right. Yeah. What'd you say? Do you like McDonald's? How am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> like, what if I said no? I was like, fuck yeah. this place. No, it's uh, it's not bad. In terms of the jobs I've had, because I, I think you'd be very hard pressed to find a job. I'm not saying they don't exist, but to find a job that you love everything about. Teaching is by far the best job I've ever had. Um, we, uh, we had a professor once who told us, you teach for free, you, you get paid to grade, which is true. I could do this all day, legit, but especially like in my English classes, you have like 20 plus students. I have four English classes, okay, outside of this one. So about 100 students. So every time a paper is due, I'm going to get about 100 papers, and it's awful. Like, it's soul murder to have to read that many papers and grade them. So that part sucks. But most of the other stuff is pretty good. I enjoy it. You learn stuff, too. If anybody ever thinks about teaching any, any level, you, you think you know a subject, whatever it might be, but you teach it to somebody, you, you understand it so much more. It's, it's crazy. Yes, ma'am. If you could have changed your major, what would, what would it have been? My wife and I talk about this sometimes. First of all, for her, when she, because we both, we went here, when she got here, she was a nursing major, because her mother was a nurse. Her mom was a nurse for a very long time, and it was just, like, it just seemed like a thing to do. And then, not long after, she switched to philosophy, which is very different. That's another one of those majors where it's like, so you don't want to make money. Um, but we joke if we hadn't 
had been the majors we were, we probably both would have been history. For similar reasons, I think, at least for me, to English, which is they're both in kind of different ways about who we were, but it's not like that's a dead thing. It, especially if you're into history or English, you understand you study that you you study that you're interested in it because it's also who we became, which means it's who we're gonna be, right? Like you're able to to understand so much more about just human beings that way. History is awesome. I just got done reading this book called The Butchering Art. It was all about Victorian surgery, which doesn't sound terribly captivating, but understand in the Victorian era, they couldn't put people to sleep yet for surgery. And they didn't know germs were a thing. So they weren't washing their hands. They weren't washing their tools. Uh, surgeons would straight up walk in with a butcher's apron, like covered in other people's stuff, and just be like, let's go. Like legit, they would tie people down. Like most, most of the time back then, they were like, something's wrong with that, we gotta cut it off. And the best surgeons were considered the best because they were the quickest at it, because you wanted the quickest. So like, they would tie you down and be like, let's fucking go and just start. Right? Very interesting book. Yeah. How many stamps in your passport do you have? Do what? How many stamps in your passport do you have? I've never left the country. Never left the country. No, I've only been out of South twice. Really? Yeah, and that's not like a decision really, it's just, for most of my life I was pretty broke. And um, I worked a lot. Like I moved out on my 18th birthday. You know, I finished high school. Uh, on a friend's couch. So from then on, especially, I've been like kind of hustling, but not a lot of trips. My wife has been all over. She's been all kinds of countries, all kinds of places. It sounds cool. Yeah. No, it'd be cool. I mean, like I've been, I've been to. My wife wanted to go to San Francisco for our honeymoon. We, we, we went there, and uh, some friends and I, when I was 21 or thereabouts, uh, we drove to New York for spring break, which is the sort of thing you can do when you're 20. Right. I'd be too tired right now. I couldn't do that. <laughs> Fuck that. I want to sleep. <laughs> it's a drive. Yeah. I would not do it now. Do you guys feel like you're any closer to solving these? Those are some good questions not based on these, though. I like that. Oh, you guys actually did pretty well. You think you have the answer? Okay. Okay. It did. I'll close the floor then, but I want to make sure. Anybody else have anything? If you can ask about this stuff, or you can ask some, some other. You guys had some good questions. Like real, it's funny to me, like I like to be transparent with you guys. My last class was so laser focused on this stuff, I legit saw like the Zodiac Killer uh, strings on the wall coming up, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe it's this, you know, oh, whatever. And they were, trying, they were trying to catch me in lies, like I could see them talking to each other about giving me different questions. Like, but you guys left this behind real fast. You're like, ah, do you hate your job? Like type of thing. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you guys think? What What's the the lie? I guess. Do what? The last name. The last name. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're saying this? So you're saying pain is my real last name? Pain. He says pain is not your last name. So and you're saying this is a lie, mm -hmm. which means pain is my last name. Oh. No. <laughs> Let's do this a different way. Yeah, I read that completely wrong. <laughs> What, all right, we'll try to do. What's the truth? Two of these are true. Okay. You married your high school oh, sweetheart. So I married my high school sweetheart and. And I've been punching the pain. <laughs> so you're saying this is a lie? You guys are being real squirrely about this part. I mean, it is now, but it didn't used to be. So you're saying this is true? So that means one of these other ones has to be a lie. The high school sweetheart and the sweetheart 
Is I can't hear you. I'm sorry. The high school sweetheart one is the one. Why do you say that? You guys never even asked me about that. She was dating a girl who punched me in the face. We were dating her when we were like 17, right? She was an ex girlfriend. When we were like 17, right? Yeah. So, like, aren't you that high girl in high school? And then, all and then I started dating another girl? My wife. <laughs> oh, you were still in high school? Yeah, that's, that's what that means. Yeah. Uh -huh. that's, that's, that's what I asked how long they must have had been been together. She said, like, 16 years. She was unhappy that I was with somebody else. Oh, so you cheated on her? No, ex girlfriend. Oh, right. You seem to have been talking to her. Oh. No. Oh, I thought it was a crazy reaction, too. I was like, why are you even here? And then she let me know why she was there. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll finish this up, but I just, there's a little bit of confusion. So like, who thinks this one was a lie? Anybody? We'll just do hands. Nobody. We're all convinced that one's true? Okay. Does anybody think this one was the lie? A couple people? Okay. Does anybody think this one was the lie? You're not sure? Okay. You guys should have asked more questions. You no, know, he was the only guy that I think asked me anything about this one. Okay. I guess we'll call it. There's like uncertainty, and then it seemed like some people will chose this one. This one is true. And it played out pretty much just how I told you. She punched me in the face. Fortunately, I had pretty much cleaned up by the time that happened. I didn't have to go back in and work more bleeding. I did have to borrow somebody's shirt to get home. She ruined my shirt. Uh, this is also true. The thing I told you about. Uh, my biological grandfather, uh, maybe he's dead, I don't know. He sounds like an awful person. Uh, that one's not true. I met my wife. I met her in the master's program here when I was 20, whatever, I don't know. Uh, and then we got married and, uh, a while after that. So it seemed like some of you guys were leaning toward this, but you never asked me about it. So I think that's why you were unsure, right? Which is cool, you know. I understand too, maybe it's kind of weird. This is our first real day. Normally what would have happened, you would have come in for the syllabus, you would have come in on Tuesday, we might actually talk a little bit and like get to know each other, and then we could do this. But with the world we're in, this is what we have. It's kind of fun though. And that's also, um, I like to open up with that because a lot of this class, I don't, I don't quite know what you've been told what this class is supposed to be, but a lot of this class is games, improv games. I wanted to do the first one myself just to show you that it's okay. Because at some point, very soon, it's gonna be you guys up here doing things. And some, some people freak out, so it's fine. Anybody can do it, I did it. What are we gonna do next? Um, all right, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about kind of what we just did, uh, the homework that I want you to do as a result of that, and then I have one more little assignment, I guess, and then we'll all just go home, or wherever it is we go after this. <laughs> to begin with, um, and I hate it too because so much of this class is about communication, but like we can't see each other's faces. I don't know what to do about that, actually. Anyway, um, some of the things I want you to think about sort of going forward. Um, number one, if you're the, the goal-oriented sort of person, you can think about our homework for this week. It's on course, Dan. It's super simple. It, it's something to the effect of um, talk to me about the interview process, like from this class, you guys interviewing me. Um, how did that go? Did you, uh, did you get the lie wrong? Um, it seemed like pretty much all of you did, even the ones that said it was this one, by the end were like, I don't know, so like, you can't count that as a win. Don't play that game. But looking back on it now, do you, were there other questions you feel like you could have asked and you, you didn't think about it at the time? Um, was there information you, you wanted to get 
and didn't get at somehow. Um, things like this. Other things you could consider are tone. The tone I take just in class generally, but also in the interview we, we just did, is pretty casual, right? I make no bones about that. I don't try to hide that. I'm, I could be a pretty casual, look, I dress like my mom dropped me off at the mall, right? So that, that, that's where we're at. Um, did that affect the interview process? Would it have gone, I mean, it, it certainly would have gone differently had we approached it differently, if it had been more professional, I wore a tie, I don't know. Um, but at the same time, does maybe the, the different tone allow for a different kind of interview? You guys especially, because I can't help but compare you to Tuesday because we did the same exercise with them. Like I said, they were laser focused on this stuff for whatever reason. I'm trying to remember why they got that way. They had a different tone, I guess. But you guys, maybe it's just based on how we were with each other, were all but ready almost immediately to talk about other stuff. And it felt more casual, right? It felt more like, uh, like a conversation, less like an interview there for a minute, right? That's a very different thing. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but it's something worth thinking about. How did we move to that mode? Because we did it seamlessly. I didn't take us there, you guys did. And so I just want you to reflect a little bit upon that process and just so we're clear, I assume no one was taking notes on that, because why would you? But we are filming it. I am going to post this. So say tomorrow night or whenever you might do that little write-up, you're like, I don't remember anything that happened. Well, you'll, I'll have this posted uh, probably later today. I, I'll, I'll have it up by then. It takes a while to upload these on YouTube on the phone. but um, And you can go back and watch it if you want, just to, to jog your memory. But that's your homework for this time. When is it doing? Uh, Saturday by midnight. Yeah. But it's not like it, it's not a super involved thing. It's like a a first homework assignment. You know, nothing intense. The last thing I want you to think about, sort of in that vein, and then I'm going to talk to you about kind of what we're looking forward to now. We have cooler assignments coming up, by the way. I mean that. I know that's a stupid thing to say, but it's true. I'm being honest with you. The other thing I want you guys to think about, just going forward, what this class was, I took this class when I was a student. I think I graduated with my bachelor's in like, oh God, 20, hang on, 2011, something like that. I know I'm old, right? Um, but I took this class when I was like a sophomore or freshman or something. So it's been around at least that long. Back then, like we would end the class with a job interview. You'd have to go talk to a different professor that you never met in their office. You had to dress up, which when you're 20 means you're dressing up like you had a speeding ticket, right? Like it's like that. Um, at least that's what it was for me. And you, you have this mock job interview, which like I'm not saying there's no value to that. But it's 2020, for God's sakes, again, we can't even see each other's faces. Things feel different. Things seem like they're headed in a different direction. So it's not like we're not gonna do that stuff with some of the interview uh, mechanics, some of the sort of presentation mechanics. You guys are gonna present information at different points this semester. But also, I'm of a mind, especially now, with the way the world is, more and more, man, we gotta be able to do stuff electronically. We gotta be able to do stuff online. And there's difficult ways to do it where you can get super complicated, or there's easy ways, right? I'm not saying these videos are great if you've looked at them, but it's a start, and this will be online, right? Like, that's wild. If I wanted to make it more like a TED Talk, I could bring in like a fog machine or something, like we could get crazy, but at the end of the day, it's the same method, right? So to me, that's where by the end of the semester I want us to be is much more how do we present ourselves in more of a 2020 way. Okay. 
I think that's all I got to say about that. Looking forward to next week. Um, there's something I want you guys to put together. And we can hive mind a little bit of this because there are different points you guys can freeze in this process. So to begin with, we're gonna brainstorm for like two minutes. I want you to think of a, of a celebrity that you would love to interview. Now we all understand, um, unless the stars somehow align, that this is terribly unlikely, whoever this person might be. Somebody asked last time, they could be dead. It could be a dead celebrity. It's up to you. We, we discover the cure, we dig them up, we bring them back, and you get to put a microphone in their face or whatever. Can you might think of somebody like living or dead, they're like, man, I just want to talk to that person for like five, ten minutes. Find something out. Can we get it? Because some people don't, so I just want a couple examples. Yo, what's up? Oh, no. Sorry, excuse me. Who? Sorry, excuse me. Who? Yeah, this is a holistic doctor from my doors. Oh, okay. That he pretty much probably cured everything. Okay. That's all uh, pretty intense. Okay, that sounds like it'd be an interesting interview for sure. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. A couple other examples just to help people out. For instance, again, I did this exercise with the class on Tuesday. I couldn't think of anybody. There's a hard question, there's a lot of pressure. Nobody you would want to talk to. Nobody you look up to. See, that was my problem. I'm pessimistic, I don't look up to anybody. I think I'm going to talk to, this might sound kind of weird, but like Jeffrey Epstein, you know? I mean, that is weird yeah. for some reasons, but I, I think we all, uh, for the most part, understand why you might want to talk to somebody like that. I mean, it's not the same, but it's almost like, I want to interview Hitler. Not because I'm a fan. I don't want to like be his friend. I just want to be like, hey man, are you actually crazy? Or just like pretend? You know? Like you're awful regardless, but like, what was going on with all the like, stuff you were doing? You know? Yeah, sure. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be an interview, man. Was he actually dead though? I mean, I to give you a, a magic eight ball sort of answer, all signs point to yes. But, you know, I guess in the way that we can't truly know anything that we don't know, sure. Okay. So we had two very intense answers. Does anybody want to interview like Beyonce or something? Anybody like nicer? Let's do one more. Some of you, some of you are keeping it to yourself, that's fine. I just I want one more example. I still, honest God, I can't think of anybody. Will Smith? Will Smith? Because of the recent stuff? <laughs> Leave that guy alone. Leave him alone. He said he don't get her back, so. I don't. Then let him. <laughs> Leave him alone. All of that is just. And if you don't know, it just. It doesn't matter. Jesus. Come on. The world is rough. He just seems like a nice guy no, who had a weird guy. thing happen to him. No, he's a great guy. But we're gonna rag on him as a society. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so our, our triple header is a holistic doctor who was possibly murdered in New York. Uh, uh, Well-connected pedophile who was also possibly murdered, also in New York, I think. Uh, or maybe not, right? With the crazy thing you were saying, and then um, and then Will Smith, who was Twitter murdered. <laughs> okay. Any of those would be interesting, right? It, it could be like a, a childhood uh, person you looked up to. It could be a teacher that you haven't talked to in a long time because why would you talk to them in a long time, right? But you're like, I'm kind of curious what Mr. What's-His-Face is doing now. Anybody, right? Does everybody have somebody in their head? Somebody? We're good? Okay, because you need somebody. If you don't, the next part's going to be hard. All right, the next thing I want you to do. We won't take five minutes, right? Sit down. What questions would you want to ask this person? Now, here's the key. 
if you write enough, you're going to start with some obvious stuff, like were you really murdered? Uh, I don't know. Who, who came to your island, right? Like whatever madness. It depends on who you're talking to. But if you keep going, in some of these cases anyway, you'll surprise yourself with some of the questions, right? Some of these might be totally out of left field. I want you to keep that. I want you to chase that stuff, right? Just see what you can generate. So take a couple minutes. See what you can do. All right. So here's the thing about what I just had you guys do. I'm not one to ask you to do something for no reason. And it would seem to fly in the face of that when I say, hey, write down a bunch of questions for somebody you're probably never going to talk to. What I want you to do, and we can brainstorm this part too. We had to do that in the last class with a couple. Instead of interviewing whomever it was you were thinking about, okay, for next week, you have a homework assignment. It's called interview reflection. This... This homework assignment I'm telling you about right now is due next Saturday. So you have, you have time, okay? I don't want you to freak out. Sometimes you guys freak out. Plenty of time on this, okay? But to reflect upon an interview for that homework assignment, you first must conduct an interview. So what I want you to do sometime between now and then, five, ten minute plus, you can go longer. I would love for you to end up going longer with somebody. That's kind of up to you. But I want you to interview someone with these questions. Now there's a catch to that, because I know some of you are looking at your questions and like, yeah, good luck. We'll get there. But the first thing I want to say is, whoever you interview, I mean, chances are better than good, it's going to be somebody you know, right? Friend or family. It's going to, you got to be able to get in touch with this person in the next week, okay? So don't shoot for the moon. Don't go crazy. But even if you interview somebody you feel like you know really well, say it's your mom. I mentioned earlier I'm 34, right? Which I know sounds really old. It feels really old in the mornings with my back. I've learned things about my mom in the past couple of years. I was like, really? You don't know everybody like you think you do. I'm just going to put it like that. And I'm not saying you want to find stuff about, uh, out about your mom right now. So choose your target wisely. But pick somebody. Actually talk to them. Actually interview them. Right? Allow yourself to be surprised. Follow up on things where you can. Now, the problem I mentioned before. I have an example. Just because it's like one of the people I figure we all know who it is. Say... For the first step, you're like, I'm going to interview LeBron James, right? Just because, like, he seems like a pretty interesting dude. Okay. One of your questions is like, man, what was it like to win the NBA Finals? And it's like, look, that's a stupid question. So you get more specific. No, LeBron James has been working at this one thing for his whole life, right? He was always good. He was always famous. Like, I think ESPN was showing, like, his middle school games at one point. It's, I couldn't even imagine growing up like that, right? But he kind of kept his head on straight, did all that, worked his ass off, finally won that first championship, whatever that was, right? That's a lot of time and effort to finally get a thing. What must that feel like? I'm not sure I know. I've never worked that hard for that long in my life. So I would ask him that. But then the teacher's like, all right, but you're not interviewing LeBron James. Go interview your brother or something. Well, my brother's never won an NBA championship. And is unlikely to do so. I'm the tallest person in my family. So, I'd have to change that question, right? To something that applies to him. The first part is, I may not quite know what his, like, crowning achievement is. So maybe I ask, like, hey man, think about, like, really think about this for a second. What are, what are you the most proud of in your life? Like, what have you achieved in your life? that you would hold up and say, like, that's number one. Because if you talk to your parents, they're going to give you cliche answers. They're like, well, you, of course. They're like, shut up. What are you really proud of that you did? You know? You, you, be, you might be surprised. You don't know. Maybe your mom knocked somebody out in an alley one time. Like that girl tried to do to me. It could happen. 
So what are they most proud of in that example? And what did it feel like? What, what did it really feel like to like actually attain that thing? Right? Could they describe it for you? Can they remember? That is how, in this example, I would take that one question for LeBron James and move it to, you know, somebody who's not out there about to get kicked out of the playoffs, you know? I'd find somebody else. So I say all that because, again, I noticed some of you looking at your questions as I was talking, just like, I don't know. Are there any questions we can help you with as a class? I'm really good at this, by the way. Anything we got to shift just a little bit? Or does everybody feel pretty confident in their, their ability to do that? Okay. Well, of course, we're not going to add like a portion of questions to it. But sure. Of course, it's not going to Well, yeah, but again, part of the exercise is, I, to the best of your ability, I would like for you to try to ask those questions. Do you have one in particular that you're worried about? I mean, because I was talking about Dr. 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 Sidney, and I was sure. Like, uh, what age do you start holistic studies? You know, like sure. I'm not sure. Well, so for instance, I mean, are are you thinking of who you might interview? Really? Right. Who? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, then, because I'll just use an example. Then, I keep going back to mom because, like, some of you are going to interview your mom, which is fine. Um. If it was my mom, uh, my mother, had, as far as I know, was never engaged in holistic studies, but um, I know what she's done uh, career-wise. Um, I could ask about that, or I could say, you know, mom, I wouldn't phrase it quite like this, but like, I feel like your job is awful. Um, if you could do anything else, what would it be, <laughs> right? And talk to me about that. And again, who knows what they would say to that. And then depending on what they say, what if my mom was like, I want to be an NFL linebacker? I'm like, that's wild. Would you, would you be outside or inside? She's like, I'd be outside. Would you be a pass rusher? Are you playing like a 3-4? My mom may like, have this whole realm of knowledge I, that I never knew, right? Like, it just depends. So that's what I mean. You can fashion any of those. You just have to, depending on the question and the person, maybe be a little more uh, open-ended with it. But I don't want you, to the best of your ability, to throw any of these questions out. These are questions you wanted to ask. So they're probably pretty good. But they're just focused on a different person. So you gotta, you gotta change the focus. Yeah. Okay. Any other issues like that? Because I'm good at this. I can, I can fix this shit. I can do it. The last thing I'll tell you for that, um, like I said, the homework associated with it is due next weekend, so like you have time, okay? Don't forget about it, but like you got some time on it. I, I will say I recommend, I'm, I can't really require it, I guess, but I recommend you record the interview. A note on that, I'm not gonna take that recording. That's not for me, okay? So if you're worried about that or whoever you're interviewing, like that, First of all, let people know you're recording if you're recording. That's just good practice. But I'm not gonna ever get a hold of that. That's for you, uh, especially when it comes time to do this little reflection I'm asking of you. It could help to have that. Um, plus, I keep going to the mom example. If she does say something really wild, wouldn't that be hilarious to have that recorded? 